As one of the oldest and most famous brands in the world, Rolls-Royce have been providing luxury motor cars to the uber-rich for over a century. Everything about the vehicle, it, 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 it just shouts out luxury, it shouts out success. Well, you relate a Rolls-Royce to money, you, you automatically think, oh, he's got to have a few bob. It's opulence because you dare to drive a car like that. It's nice to drive somewhere and people are going to welcome you like you own the place. But to keep the world's wealthy happy with their wheels, it takes a special kind of dedication. The mirrors are not clean, the windows are not clean. You need to develop an eye for the water drops. I mean, this is a very precious car, it must be like a diamond. In a year when Rolls-Royce are building their most expensive car ever, we meet the people willing to go to extraordinary lengths for motoring perfection. It's not easy to be number one. I think you have to be a little bit OCD. I think in total the, the whole job has uh, 446 times in it, almost 25 carats. Everything that's been done here will be done again. Everything. Tucked away on the Goodwood Estate in West Sussex is the current home of Rolls-Royce motor cars. Front of house manager at Rolls-Royce is ensuring I present a befitting experience for all our customer and visitors to Rolls-Royce. I check everything from tree length to grass length. The grass at the moment is looking a little thicker than it normally is, but that's because we've had to wait for it to grow back after the uh, extremely cruel summer that we've had this year. The first things people see when they walk into reception is our, um, one of our quotes from one of our founders, Sir Henry Royce, uh, which is, take the best that exists and make it better. As you can see, we have our Rolls-Royce visitors book. We also have a VIP signing in book, um, which is where our VIPs, um, celebrities, high profile customers or guests will actually sign as well. And is it possible to have a look at that VIP book? It isn't, unfortunately, no, because obviously it contains their signatures. Um, a wonderful collection book for, a, uh, for an autograph hunter, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, it, um, it remains uh, confidential. Rolls-Royce was founded in 1906 by motoring enthusiasts Charles Rolls and Henry Royce. Their aim? To build the perfect motor car. Perfection basically requires obsession in every single detail. If you see that attention to detail and the immaculate quality of, of every single material, the whole car, the wheels, all the chrome works, even those details here, there's so many things I could talk about. The quality of the seats, the riding comfort, the reliability, the engine, this is just fantastic. As head of marketing, Mark Milau's job is to make sure the world loves Rolls-Royce as much as he does. First, when you come to the car, you touch a full solid metal door handle, and then you open it, it's just a it's just a special occasion. Most of the people ask, where's the umbrella? Because everyone knows there's an umbrella hidden in every Rolls Royce. Here in that car, it's just in the front wing. It's very effortless. Each year, Rolls Royce build a one-off collection car to help invigorate their appeal. One of the things we do, for example, is to look into the past. Um, we did a car last year, which is quite interesting. It's a it's a car, it's called the Aviator, and the Aviator was inspired basically by um, Charles Rolls. And Charles Rolls, he was a pioneer aviator. And we thought, what might be the car he would drive in that century? So this is where we work together with our designers to come up with really crazy ideas. For example, uh, the wood interior was inspired by the propeller of, that, of a classic aeroplane. This car had even like an, a jet fighter clock. This year, to mark the 10th anniversary of their new factory, Rolls-Royce are building the most expensive car they've ever made. We're now heading to maybe the most exciting, most extraordinary collection car we've ever done. It's called the Celestial. And it's basically a celebration, and it's inspired by the night over Goodwood on the 1st of January 2003 when we've handed over the first Phantom to our first customer. 
And this car is very special because it carries lots of really extraordinary pieces of, of craftsmanship. Over the next four weeks, the one-off Celestial will be built around Rolls-Royce's vision of the night sky. They've designed a paint that contains glass flakes to give greater depth, and a roof that lights up with over 500 stars. But what pushes the Celestial into a whole new price range is the interior decorations. What makes it the pinnacle of, of luxury is that we put diamonds in the car. So basically the whole rear compartment is surrounded by little diamonds. But not to show off the wealth of the potential owner of the car, it's more like the most natural translation of a star into reality. Making a diamond decorated car a reality requires highly specialized craftsmanship. So Rolls-Royce have employed one of the UK's leading goldsmiths. This is a very exclusive project. I've never known this to be done before in any motor car. Richard Fox's workshop has the task of setting over 400 diamonds into the Celestial's interior. This is one of the door cappings. And we're going to insert the diamonds into the drill holes. We're using beautiful diamonds of very high quality. We're certainly involved in the tens of thousands of pounds, without doubt. And then, of course, you've got all the 18 karat white gold. So uh, this project um, is not for the man on the street, shall we say. <laughs> Each brilliant cut diamond is fitted into an 18 karat white gold tube and positioned at exactly the same height. I don't think people realise the amount of time that's spent on a project such as this. Somewhere in the region of about 350 hours, which is an extraordinary length of time. Cars like the Celestial are designed to encourage buyers to customise their own car. The idea of a collection car is quite important for us because this is a way how we can actually stimulate demand. It's an inspiration for people to do their own bespoke cars, to create their own interpretation of Rolls Royce. The starting price for a new Rolls Royce is £200,000, but the majority of customers spend at least another £50,000 on bespoke extras. Okay, so this is a um, ostrich skin, some samples of the crocodile skin, rabbit pelts. If we don't investigate these things and somebody asks for them at a later date, then we'll get caught out. Walnut, elm, this is mahogany, this is nice. Olive ash, this is bleached ash, Santos polisander. All of this here is going to turn into interior parts for the car. This will be the top of your doors, this will be your horn push buttons, it will be your telephone drawer, it will be all the hard parts of the car that you can touch which aren't covered in leather. To meet the customer's desire for uniqueness, the workshops are under constant pressure to come up with new ideas. This is a uh, special colour we developed. The pigment used in this was uh, real gold. It would be horrendously expensive to do it, I think probably north of £50,000 to do a car in this type of colour. Hello, hello. Good to see you. The average Rolls-Royce customer already owns seven or eight other cars. Yeah. Entrepreneur Paul Bailey has 62. My birthday's coming up. I wanted to treat myself to something really special. And the Rolls-Royce Wraith is the top of anyone's birthday list for sure. Paul has ordered a large amount of extras to guarantee his latest car stands out from the crowd. The base price of the Wraith is 235,000, and so I've spent about 120 grand on options. The paint here is a very expensive option. We've called it Selena Red, we had to name it, so I named it after my wife, which was a brownie point for me. The chrome wheels are an expensive option. We've obviously got this uh, very brilliant silver on the roof, so we've got a great contrast. And then we've gone with night vision, lane departure, head-up display. 
and I'm very comfortable that if I park this against another Wraith, I'm not going to have somebody else thinking they've got a nicer one than I've got. Having spent six months working on the Celestial's diamond-studded panels, Richard Fox has brought them in for inspection. One of the people in charge of quality control on this job is woodshop manager John McWilliam. My role is to make sure that the product is up to scratch, completely perfect. There will be no compromise, no, no little concessions. The first panel is given the all clear. The second panel is the one that will contain the clock and will be the most visible to the customer. See it right there. I don't expect to notice anything on the part. Nothing should draw my attention. If it draws my attention, there's something wrong with it. One or two here that are slightly lower and this one that's slightly proud. Imperfections have been found. It's not good enough for our customer. After intense scrutiny, the panel is rejected. It was noted that uh, one or two of the diamonds, in fact, I think there were about four or five diamonds, maybe six, that uh, were either too low or too high. These adjustments, just how big are they? Tenths of a millimetre. They're really, really minute. Um, you're talking about probably the thickness of a sheet of paper. There is no mechanism in here for inferior parts going out the door. It has to be right. I know that this car has been built in England, and I know it, uh, it, uh, it's all been made uh, by hand. Part of our heritage. It's, it's it's part of us. This this is something unique. People all over the world love love Rolls Royces, and I got to be honest, I'm one of them. <laughs> the history this vehicle carries is British. You know, it was made for the English gentleman. It was made for royalty. You know, it was made for the Queen. So there's so much history behind this. If it wasn't for the Britishness of the vehicle, the vehicle would not be half of what it is today. This is what sells the vehicle. This most British of companies was bought 10 years ago by German-owned BMW. But the new custodians know that the world wants the Rolls-Royce brand to remain quintessentially British. I'm signing letters and I'm writing a letter to every customer we have. Whenever you buy a new car, you get a letter from me. And the letter is done in a perfect British way. Basically, we are a British brand. And for that reason, even if I, being a German, would write to German customers, I would never change my language. I would never write them in my German mother tongue. That, that would look a little bit strange because they've bought Rolls Royce and they have bought a truly British car, and that's exactly the reason why they love the car. So they get a proper English letter from me saying, Dear Mr. Schmidt. Of the three and a half thousand Rolls-Royce made in Britain each year, 90% are sold abroad. The biggest buyers are China and the US, closely followed by the Middle East. Abu Dhabi city is very rich. There are more Rolls Royces bought here in Abu Dhabi than any other city in the world. 
All the Emiratis here, they, they like the cars. Uh, some of the people, they like uh, the cars more than liking their wives. Kadim Al Heli is the bespoke manager of Rolls Royce's Abu Dhabi dealership. This is the biggest Rolls Royce dealership in the world. I show you something very interesting. This is part of my target to, to fill my office with trophies. 2012 Global Dealer of the Year. Best Bespoke Performance Salesperson 2009, also best in the world. In 2010, we achieved in After Sales, also number one in the world. Best Bespoke Dealer Worldwide, Global Dealer in Sales Volume, Best Performing Sales and Regional Dealership. Kadim's success lies in tapping into the Middle Eastern imagination, creating themes his customers can't resist. Elf Lele or Lele Kusat Kulle Lele. One thousand, one night, story of each night. A story, it is the big issue. Customer buying a story. Kadim's latest theme is based on the country's pearl diving past. I'm working on a project uh, called Gawas. Gawas means uh, diver. A lot of families uh, used to survive from diving. Before Abu Dhabi became oil rich, men would risk their lives diving for pearls on the seabed. I like this concept because this is appreciation for their grandfathers and what they did in the past. Having received the green light, the pearl diver concept has gone into production at the Goodwood factory. They've used turquoise colouring to represent the Arabian Sea and decorated the interior with seashell leather and mother of pearl. Kadim came up with the idea nine months ago and has just one more week until the cars will be shipped out to the Middle East. It's like uh, the mother who, who's waiting for the delivery to see her, uh, her little uh, new baby. It's, uh, it is the same. What's with the gold telephone? Uh, you know, sometimes I, sometimes I talk more than 40 minutes, discuss with customer on the phone. You know, to, to put this on my head for 40 minutes, I, will, I cannot sleep at night if I spend hours talking on the telephone. So I use this to reduce the stress on my head. I talk through this. Another bespoke car in production is the one-off Celestial, Rolls-Royce's most expensive collection car ever. Based on the standard Phantom model, Rolls-Royce want the Celestial to evoke a sense of the night sky. 576 tiny fibre optics will be woven into the roof interior, creating a unique starlight headliner. As you're sitting in the car, you will see a replica of the night sky over Goodwood on the 1st of January 2003 when our first customer got their first car. So we got our data from the South Downs Observatory, so we knew that the information that we were going to be working with was accurate. So if Patrick Moore was sitting in the back of the car, then obviously he would know what he was looking at. But you can believe us when we say that we've, picked, we've put all the stars in the right places. So a lot of painstaking hours. Another of the Celestial's starry features has also been mounting up the man hours. I think that needs to be lifted just very, very slightly, doesn't it? It's just a tad, tad too low in comparison to the others. Over 400 diamonds have been hand set into four of the car's interior panels. One of the panels has been rejected by Rolls-Royce's quality control team and goldsmith Richard Fox 
has been ironing out the minute imperfections. Maybe about six or seven stones that either needed re recalibrating up or recalibrating down, uh, which we've just been doing over the past day or so. No doubt I'll be grilled again by eight or ten of the, the um, specialist staff there, uh, but I'm pretty confident that we've done very well with this part. Though hopeful Rolls-Royce will have little to complain about, a last-minute inspection at the workshop has caused Richard concern. We noticed a very, very small crack in the, uh, from one of the holes leading out into the lacquer. But it's of nobody's particular fault. There was a minute crack going between uh, this stone and this one here, um, which you, you can't really see with the human eye. It's not acceptable. It's clearly visible to us. I don't know if the camera can see it. It's very, very fine, but it's quite severe. What does this mean? It means this part in this condition is no good. Right. It means make this again. Everything that's been done here will be done again. So we will have to remove all the uh, chenilles with the diamonds in them, and then we'll have to uh, uh, we'll recalibrate them back into the new component. <laughs> that was really quite deflating. Um, there's nothing worse than something happens that's out of your control. The crack is very, very small, but nevertheless, that's just not good enough for Rolls-Royce, and so back to the drawing board. Heavily bespoke cars like the Celestial help Rolls-Royce showcase the extravagant options available to customers. One such extra is the Rolls-Royce picnic hamper. What is this exactly for material? You have the, the upholstery leather from the car on the inside, which has got this accurate sort of reflection, as I say, of the inky quality. And then you've got the more robust, hard-wearing saddle leather on the exterior. Keeping with the night sky theme, the hamper's plates are decorated with constellations hand-painted in nice platinum. Get that variation. How much does the camper cost? The picnic hamper, the base price of it would run about £20,000. Most of the people just want to have it as an accessory which comes with the car. You can use it from the functionality and from the quality. It's definitely something you can do, but it's more to complete the Rolls Royce lifestyle. So do you think some people that buy the hamper won't actually ever use it? Yeah, that's very likely. At the Abu Dhabi dealership, two bespoke Rolls-Royce have arrived from England and are about to meet their maker. Have you seen the cars yet? No, I haven't seen the cars. Are you looking forward to it? Yes. I was thinking all night how the car looks. After nine months of waiting, Rolls-Royce dealer Kadeem can finally see his Pearl Diver-themed cars in the flesh. Let's see my little baby. Super. It's just perfect. I cannot uh, describe it. It's just perfect. It's beyond my expectation. Won't you be sorry to see them go? No, I will be very happy to see them on the road. Do you think they'll be hard to sell? No. They will fly. These cars our money in the bank. You have to be a perfectionist. You have to be somebody who adores luxury. So if you have the money and you have the dream and you want to buy it and you want to reward yourself, then there's nothing better than a Rolls Royce. I'm a car lover. So each car has its own mood. 
If I'm in the mood of driving fast, I would drive the Ferrari. If I'm in the mood of enjoying my time, listen to good music, sing, resource myself, spend some time with myself, I would take the Rolls. Everyone will stop and turn and everybody wants to see who's in it, you know. Everybody thinks it's going to be Simon Cowell or somebody like that. The umbrella is a very nice gesture and the Rolls Royce. Unfortunately, we don't use it over here. It doesn't rain much. It's always sunny, most of the year. <laughs> Hoping to attract a younger market, Rolls-Royce are launching a new, sportier model called the Wraith. The danger is if, if you do not adapt to a changing world, then it could be seen as outdated, old-fashioned. This is where we're writing a new chapter. It gives the whole brand a new face. Wraith itself, it's, it's nice, British and quirky, being a, a more detailed description of a ghost, a, a darker ghost, more menacing. To help spread the word of the new menacing wraith, Rolls-Royce have chosen Vienna for the international press launch. Journalists are being flown in from around the world to be given a 24-hour taste of the Rolls-Royce lifestyle. Vienna's premier venue, the Palais Coburg, has been hired for two weeks exclusively for Rolls-Royce guests. Behind me normally, it's the reception desk. And it's the first time in history that we, re we, we rebuilt uh, this, this, uh, this reception desk. It's gone, and Rolls-Royce built a new Rolls-Royce world. Over there, some lounges, and uh, over there, we have the Wraith bar. We have a beautiful uh, picture uh, of the sign of the Wraith. Normally, we're playing a bit traditional music. Now, we play Deep House. Deep House. Deep House. It's, uh, it's, it's a kind of chill music. It's, uh, it's not too heavy. It's really very relaxed. It's really nice, you know, you start shaking. Sparing no expense, Rolls-Royce have shipped in 20 of their new wraiths. Hoping to give the best possible impression, great care is taken, even with the parking. We like to get them so that they're in a perfect line. So if you look down the center line of the car or look down the door mirrors, if you look down alongside them, they look as one. I think you have to be a little bit OCD. I think that looks pretty good. The journalists will follow a carefully planned Alpine route in the mountains outside of Vienna. If you like to start it up, if you just put your foot on the brake and press the stop-start button. We've got a really, really nice mix of people here. Uh, it probably goes a little bit beyond the normal car launch. You know, I think we've even got a former Miss Lebanon 1995, so uh, very good fun indeed. I'm here to cover from a female perspective the car, that a uh, woman can drive Rolls Royce. It's not a man-only car. Rolls-Royce's most expensive collection car ever, the Celestial, is nearing the end of the assembly line. For over eight months, goldsmith Richard Fox has been working on the diamond-studded interiors. Emotionally, uh, I think it's been quite a, a long task and uh, I think we've uh, We've had to bite the lip several times, but uh, it's, it's a very, very difficult area to work in. It's, it's something that's not been done before. This particular panel has already been rejected twice. I think Richard's nervous. Anything we're not happy with, surface imperfection, crack, you name it, it goes back. We start again. Morning. Morning, Richard. Let's like cast your eye over that. Mm. Oh, no, there's another swell mark 
Okay. That's fit to go. Looks good. I'm very relieved to hear you saying that. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you've, we, you've learned a lot in this exercise. We've a huge amount, yeah. Oh. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Well, I think uh, extremely relieved uh, we've got through, John. So what more can I say? Look forward to seeing it in the car. In Vienna, journalists are returning from their test drive in the new Wraith. How did it go today, sir? Good yeah. day's motoring? Yeah. You love the car? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Rolls-Royce's carefully selected location and Alpine route seem to be paying off. The drive is just perfect. Engine very silent, very powerful. Great day? Fantastic, yeah. Oh, Great day, I'm yeah. so glad, I'm so glad. And you enjoyed yourself, yeah? It's a fashion glam car. It's a statement car that every woman would dream to, to drive. Keen to give the journalists the complete customer experience, Rolls-Royce are treating their guests to a lavish dinner prepared by the hotel's two-star Michelin chef. What are you cooking tonight? Are we cooking tonight uh, five courses, and the first and the salmon, and duck liver, and lobster, venison, banana, barbecue, petit four. Dinner will be served in the hotel vaults, which have been transformed into a moonlit woodland scene. When you come down from the, uh, from the lobby area, you're not expecting something like this. It is like as you are in a theater, as you're in a, uh, in a movie, and, you, and you're really in the middle of it. The moss here and the trees, they were shipped over from uh, England. Over a fortnight, Rolls-Royce will treat 250 journalists to the customer experience, then wait for the reviews to follow. Coming here and drinking lovely champagne and being in a beautiful place is not going to get us good reviews. But surely that helps. <laughs> of course, it's, it's very nice for us to be able to entertain our journalists in a beautiful setting, but you can't throw champagne down the journalist's necks in exchange for good reviews. You know, these are guys that are very serious about what they do, and if that car's not right, they're not going to write good pieces. In four days' time, the diamond-decorated Celestial will be flown to the Middle East, where it will be unveiled at the Dubai Motor Show. So. Okay, so the interior. Head of marketing, Mark Milau, is about to get his first glance at the finished car. What we do with every car which goes on a motor show is that we just check the prep, the preparation of the car. Is it well done? Are the features all correct? You know, need to see that this is, you know, our business card. What we show on the stand is what the people perceive when they see Rolls Royce. Get inside the car. And then, so the button just in there. So you see the stars come to life. Here you are. <laughs> you know, you're <laughs> in the middle of the orbit. You know, you're out of space. You, you, you've achieved a, a way target. Now it's, we just wait to show the world what we've yeah, conceptualized and produced here. It's just, it, it's just amazing. This car definitely has the goosebump ability. And I promise you, even in hot Dubai, uh, you will see and experience lots of people who get the goosebumps if they have the chance to enter this car. The United Arab Emirates has one of the fastest growing luxury car markets in the world. So Rolls-Royce have flown their diamond-decorated Celestial four and a half thousand miles to be their centerpiece at the Dubai Motor Show. I remember Celestial when it was just the first sketches, you know, basically painted on a napkin. It's the final chapter of a story. The CEO will be presenting the car to the world's media in the morning. 
and the stage management has to be flawless. Where's he coming from? Where? From inside. From you, you announcing him? Hmm? You announcing him? Well, they can obviously well, he, he can no, my, 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 only, my only worry is uh, it, it the is way, long, the way is a quite long way. We just want to make sure that his walk from his sort of first starting position is not too long. We don't want it to seem sort of awkward. We, you know, we don't want an awkward silence as he walks over. So we'll continue to rehearse and just, just find the best place for him to start and sort of finish from. Okay, so that's obviously too long. Doesn't work. So what we, what we could do, what we could do, it's just fine tuning at this stage. It's a bit like um, a theatre group or something. It's you know, it's it's the last fine tuning before opening night. So the dress rehearsal, so to speak. I think it's important not to to, to be very to, honest. To use this as an opportunity to, to to launch the diamonds essentially. But I think if you have like proper light on it, if you get some sparkle here, so as soon as he's opened the door and then, poof, then it comes alive, just could poof, explode. You're ma making some magic. While trying to outshine the competition at the motor show, Rolls-Royce are also giving the new Wraith model a special Middle Eastern launch. They've organized an exclusive test drive on Abu Dhabi's Formula One racetrack. This is the ultimate place to show off the Wraith, and this is the perfect market for the Wraith. Yeah, marhaba. Award-winning dealer Kadim has carefully selected clients he knows will be tempted by the new sporty model. <laughs> we will receive people who already uh, has got uh, Rolls Royces. Not just have other cars, but they already have No, Rolls maybe they have one, two, three Rolls Royces. Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing normal road speeds today, so keep any of the stability systems on. This is not just for your safety, it's also for our insurance. So if you like sign in, I'm expecting to sell a race today. You excited? And the car is too. <laughs> Have you uh, driven in a Rolls Royce before? I own seven. The high earners targeted for the event include members of Abu Dhabi's social elite. I'm a TV presenter and Abu Dhabi TV. So I'm used to the camera. I love the camera. <laughs> I'm really interested about this car and I really want to try it and go for it. What do you mean by going for? Like to buy it, definitely. And don't use the mobile phone when you're driving. Don't worry. Right, James, time you're clear to proceed whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Shall we go? Seatbelt on. We want him to share the pleasure. We want him to enjoy the lifestyle. We want him to become customer forever. Of course, after driving it, I really want to own one more than before. <laughs> the payoff for Rolls-Royce is not only to sell the Wraith, but also to get it going viral. If they make picture, means they like the car. They are going to go back home and show the images uh, to their families, and he will become our marketing seller. What will you do with all the pictures? Um, I'm going to put an Instagram. An Instagram? Yes, an Instagram, Facebook. I told them that I want the car immediately, as soon as possible. I'm in love, I think. The response to the test drive has been so good, Kadim can't keep up with demand. She wants a wraith, but I cannot supply, we are short of supply. I really want a wraith, but hopefully he's gonna supply me soon. No one. Inshallah. He's promised me, he should promise me now in front of the I camera. Prom I promise. <laughs> yeah. Salam. <laughs> <laughs> With just a few minutes until the Dubai Motor Show opens, Mark is trying to get the cleaners up to his high standard of inspection. The mirrors are not clean, the windows are not clean, so then we go around here, then always check again. Oh no, you don't do now, just listen. I mean, this is a very precious car, it must be like a diamond, yeah? So here, that's water drops. You need to, you need to develop an eye for the water drops. Thank you. 
car enthusiasts, journalists, and even Dubai royalty gather for a glimpse of the latest creations from the motoring world. For us, kind of a crescendo now. You know, it all comes together. Torsten is giving a speech. There's also a little bit of surprise in that speech. Um, there's, um, yeah, I think a, a nice message, uh, you know, to the people here attending the press conference today. There are rumors that the Celestial may have a buyer. Sayyid Torsten Muller Atwish. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here at my side is one of the finest examples of bespoke design we have ever created. It's the Celestial Phantom. Hundreds of individual embedded diamonds hand embedded into the wood pieces. This is the most expensive bespoke Rolls Royce ever created in history. Ladies and gentlemen, I can also confirm I was contacted by one of our very best customers from another part of the world. He immediately asked to buy it. The new owner also generously allowed us to keep it and to display it to members of the media here today in Dubai. The Celestial has been sold to a mystery buyer, but Rolls-Royce's strict code of client confidentiality means they are giving little away. Do you know what country it's going to? It's going uh, to Asia, yeah. That's Asia continent. Uh, any particular country? No. Could I ask roughly what the, the final price for the Celestial was? Sorry, but uh, we aren't talking prices uh, with Rolls-Royce. Do you think it was over a million pounds? This is something you need to ask someone else. Probably over a million pounds. I mean, you can guess as long as you want. You, my lips are closed, I can tell you. The diamond one? The diamond, yeah. In the door, yeah. the diamond. In this one, diamond. This one. Oh, yeah. yeah. This makes it, you know, it's really unique of its kind. Actually, maybe diamonds more for ladies. I prefer rough. Cars. <laughs> on my car, I have Swarovski crystals and my initials on the back of the car and inside as well. But yeah, here is like real diamonds. <laughs> is it a long way to get to work for you from home? No. <laughs> Probably less than half a mile. You live half a mile from work, but you still take the car? I still, yeah, I've got to keep Les in to work, <laughs> otherwise Les would be out of a job. <laughs> you know, the good thing about the Rolls Royce is that nobody will ever borrow it from you. Because it is something that is really personal. They know that it's your car. My relationship with this car is that I don't drive it too much because I want to feel special when I'm driving it. So I take it only out in a special moment. And you really got it because you really earned it. The lottery was two lucky dips. It's, it's, it's strange because um, I'm in the 45.5 million on one line and I think it was £6.75 on the second line. It makes me feel, I don't know, uh, a part of something that I would never have been a part of if it wasn't for the fact that I'm sat in a Rolls Royce and I'm driving my Rolls Royce. <laughs>